as you can see, I gotta fix the flat tire on it again. This is the third flat tire I had on this bike in the last few days. So, yeah, it's starting to become a pain in the butt because I don't know why. I don't know why. I just maybe I didn't plug it good last time. I don't know. When you're doing a tire repair on a Sturmy Archer, obviously you got to remove the Sturmy Archer uh, pieces. You always uh, put it in third gear. If you have the third, the three-speed hub, which I have. So. So you got to take it apart, and then when you reconnect it, it goes back together again qu quite easily on the Stormy Archer. So, first thing to do is prepare everything. And... It's not, it's not too difficult, honestly. It's not all that difficult. The Stormy Archer linkage here. That's why you want it in third gear. So you have the slack in this cable. So you loosen that nut. Unscrew it. And then you unscrew the shifter. Uh, uh, I don't know what they call that. Shifter change? The shifter chain? Or stem? I don't know. I don't know what they call that. But what I do on mine, so I don't get any pressure buildup of the uh, any pressure buildup of the frame. I always, I don't know, on my other bike. I don't have this issue, but when I'm loosening the Sturmy Archer, it's, it seems to be easier rather than allowing it to spring out. In this particular case, the frame is uh, 190 millimeter, and the Sturmy Archer is 170 millimeter, I think is what it is. Uh, Overall length is 190 millimeter on the Sturmy Archer. So, uh, but the bottom, but the bracket on uh, the bike is, I think it's 170 or 180 millimeter. I can't remember exactly. So it allows it to move around. So when you're tightening it, you only have a few threads showing that's what this clamp does. It squeezes it together. So when you do loosen these nuts, it relieves the pressure from the nuts. Because the nuts have to be torqued to, um, according to Sturmy Archer's pamphlets and stuff, between 24 and 26 Newton meters of torque. How do I know that? Well, I learned the hard way. I snapped one of the axles by tightening it up too much and also when you do it this way with this clamp you can unscrew these by hand just by loosening them up and then the little washers on here just slide right off 
these little washers that uh, they're square shaped that hold the axle. It's it's basically almost like a um, torque arm, I guess you'd call it, similar to like a torque arm works. It keeps the axle from spinning. So that's that, and that's and then you just release the clamp. As you'll notice, what's the frame? You see how it popped out? Yeah, that's the uh, frame distance. It's uh, yeah, the frame is 190 mil, uh, 190 millimeter. The Stormy Archer is 170. So. And then I just lift it straight out. Simple as that. Then obviously we got to do a flat tire repair as well. So uh, let me get that set up. Let me scoot this over a little bit out of the way. Always try to do disc down. That way, uh, that's just me, I guess. You don't get your greasy fingers all over the disc. So, oh, by the way, here's that axle I broke. I had broken. Uh, here's the Sturmy Archer axle and this is the side where this gear shifter chain goes into it had when I was tightening it down something didn't feel right and when I was tightening it down I think I tightened it too much over a few times of tightening it because it just sheared it right off Luckily, I had a spare axle. So, yeah. You uh, might want to torque them down to proper specs. Because over tightening them, I learned my lesson on that one. I didn't realize it was uh, that precise. But uh, from what I read, it's. It's got to be precise from what I've read. So, here's what we got. To, uh, to do some repair. Okay, oh, here's my WD-40. I use WD-40 to lube the tire. Around the bead. It just makes it easy. To slide it off, slide it open. Oh, uh, let me pull the gut of the valve out. Even though it's already flat, I still like to pull the valve stems out. Just makes it a little bit easier to, work, especially when you're uh, working with it, uh, trying to patch it or something. You can instantly inflate it and deflate it after you patch it. So it makes it a little bit easier. This one's a little bit harder than my DK bike. Because these, these wheels are three and a half inch wheels. My DK bike are four inch wheels. So this tire, you don't even need these little, uh, what do you call them? Uh, tire irons, I guess you call them, but they're you know, but they're plastic, obviously. Uh, yeah, make sure it's down below the bead, all the way around, so you can get your first bite. See, with a four-inch wheel, you don't have you don't have this issue with a four-inch wheel. Okay, 
you can usually go all the way around. Once you cut it with WD-40, okay? Once you cut it with WD-40, it slips all the way around. Okay, where's the valve? There it is. I think I know why it went flat this time. I don't think I got that when I patched it before. I don't think I got it correct. I think I used too small of a patch. I think that's what I did. Okay, remember when you're pulling these back out, say if you don't know where your hole is, this is the easiest way to find out. When you're, uh, you know, taking the tube out, don't pull it all the way out. Well, pull it all the way out, but don't take it away from the tire itself. Take it out of the tire, but leave it lay exactly the way you took it out. That way, uh, you can figure out where your hole is. And then it gives you an idea where to look on your tire, what punctured it. So, I'm going to get my air. Now I'll we'll inflate it and figure out where my. Oh, I have a big chunk of this chalk handy so you can mark the tube and the tire once you find the hole. You can inflate them five, six times their actual real size and figure out now. We know where the tube is. There's the stem. Uh, here's the stem. Here's the tire. Mark it. There's the tire. There's the tube. We know that side's up. So if we happen to misorientate the, the tube, we know which side is up. So now, what I think. That's an original patch that I did probably a year ago. Still holding strong. This is the most recent one. And I think I used too small of a patch. But I don't see any obvious holes where it's leaking. I don't even hear anything. I don't know why it went flat. Yeah, I guess a bucket of water would probably work better. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Okay, let's put the valve gut back in and see if I can find this hole because it's definitely got a slow leak in it because in a day and a half yeah a little over a day it was completely flat as you saw when I was moving the bike around now that's inflated again 
Let's see what happens. Until it blows, maybe? marking for the tube. We know this is up. So as soon as we find the hole, you know the quality of this rubber isn't all that good. Because look how much more it inflates here than it does over here. This is the thicker of the tubes. They have the thinner tubes, but Flatten a little over a day. No, no air out of there. Well, you can use WD 42 on this here to see if it, uh, nope, nothing. No leaky, leaky on that one. What about this one? Let's spray it. Oh, I saw that coming. Oh, well. There we go. Hmm. Doesn't make sense. Huh. Hmm. Oh, that's right. I usually have this open. Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. That's where I usually have it. Yep, that's more like it. So it doesn't tip over. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, so, hmm. I don't see it. It's not leaking. Let's get this plastic from this other patch off of here. Hmm. I don't know. I can't figure out why what's leaking. I don't know what's leaking. Don't know what is leaking. It's leaking. Hmm. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what's leaking. I'm just going to pump it up until it blows or it, uh, I don't know. I do have other choices on tubes. I do have multiple tubes. Uh, that's 20 inch. Here's a 26. Uh, here's a 26 inch tube. I don't know. It probably has a hole in it. Let's pump it up anyhow. Let's see if there's a, because I can't figure out where the hole is in the net. 
know where to hold that. If this one has a hole, I'll just go ahead and patch this one. Yep, this has a hole. I can hear it. There it is. Right there on the inside. Right there. There's a hole. I don't know. I'll just leave that one inflated. See where the hole could possibly be in it. I do not know. Now, here's this one. This is a higher quality uh, tube. This is a V tube. You know, the V tire company. That's who makes this tube. It's a little bit higher quality. But it's still just as thick as that one. It's uh, 26 by 4. Uh, the cheaper uh, tubes you'll see them lit, labeled as uh, 26 by 3.5 slash 4.0. Which means, you know, it'll fit a three, uh, as small as the 3.5 inch uh, higher. So there. So we know where the hole is on this one. Okay, let's double check it. Just to make sure I mark the right one. Oh, it's got two. It's got two holes on the inside, too. There's another one. Uh-oh. Maybe we should try another tube. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, that one must have been when I broke one of my, broke a couple of the spokes. That's probably what that one was from. Okay. I think I have like three or four. Okay, here's one that's been patched two. Let's see, it's got two holes in it. There's another V tire. Uh, yeah, there's another V tire. There's two patches in it right here. But I didn't patch these. I wonder where this one came from. Hmm. Where was this tube came from? I must have used it because there's slime in it. Uh, this has got to be one of my oldest tubes I ever have. Yeah, see? The V tube, too. Has slime in it. Okay. Huh. I have no idea. Why the air was coming out of that one? Yeah, this has slime in it. I put slime in it. I 
everything looks good on this one. Yeah, this is definitely the one uh, I put slime in before, for sure. So, when you take the valve guts out of these ones with slime in them, you want the valve upright. Well, upside down, kind of. So it doesn't squirt the slime out. Okay, here we go. Now, okay, start with a valve. Slip it in place. I don't have, I don't buy tubes if I ain't got a. I carry an extra tube when I'm out by myself. I carry an extra tube with me, just in case a catastrophic flat. What I mean by catastrophic means uh, actually a little, literally a blowout like I've had before. Uh, oh, what I'm doing here, so I'm taking a wire tie. So when you try to inflate the tire, uh, it doesn't push the valve stem back in, back in to the inside of the wheel. Uh, this wire tie holds the valve stem in place while you inflate it. <sighs> so there. Now is when I put the valve gut back in, and I'll inflate it just a little, just to get it to, uh, you know, kind of round shape, so it doesn't uh, get a pinch when you're putting the tire back on the wheel. <sighs> See now, see now when I clip this on, I don't have to constantly press over here to hold the tube in place because it's held in place by the wire tie. See there, just a little bit, just to inflate it. So when you put it back in the tire, it goes in real easy. Just so like a that. Get that around the tire, and then you just start pushing the tire on. Last a little bit will be a little hairy, but you know it's it's not that difficult though. On a three and a half inch wheel, it is a little tougher on a three and a half inch wheel, but it's okay. It'll usually go right on. As long as you got the bead down low. See, just like that. It was right on. Now, because I used the WD 40 uh, to get the tire off, when I inflate it, it'll set the bead spot on. I don't have to fight with uh, the, you know, popping the bead. It'll automatically set it because the tire is slippery on the bead. Uh, these tires are set to uh, maximum 30 psi. I usually run them right around 25 to 28 psi that I found pretty comfortable on a three and a half inch wheel. There we go. 28.2. It's stabilized. Okay. 
Okay. That's it. Now we'll go with uh, with my valve cap. Uh, I know I took one off. There it is. As you can see there. And then uh, clean the WD40 a little bit. You know if it bothers you. Clean it up a little bit. But I actually ride my bike, so these wheels get pretty dirty pretty quick. You can see I don't have to worry about my disc. Cleaning my disc. Is the frame. Put your chain around. Drop, drop the disc side in first, and it'll drop right into place, just like that. Drop the disc side in first, then. Get the two nuts and washers. And the clamp. Here's my clamp. What did I do with my clamp? Oh, Ooh. oh over there it is. Okay. Here we go. Now, take your wheel, your frame, squeeze it together again. As you'll see, this takes all the tension off of the Sermi Archer so you can set the proper uh, newton meters for each nut. They have 24 newton meters, 20, between 24 to 26 newton meters is what they say. So I just set it to you know, 24, 25, I think I had it set at 24.8. I think it's what the torque wrench is set to. Uh, uh, I think it's, yeah. 24.8. Yeah, Oh, that's inch pounds. Okay, I don't want newton meters. Uh, twenty four point three. I don't know if you can make that out there or not. I don't know if that can be made out or not. Twenty four point three. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Well, anyhow, that's what I said to that. Just like that. Just like that. Then you take your shifter rod, I guess that's what they call it, shifter rod, slide it in the hole, put it in there, and just you know, turn it clockwise like a regular screw and uh, make sure you have it in far enough where it starts screwing into the inner shifter shifter pod. Okay, then back it off one turn. 
then start turning it back on your linkage again. That's why you put this in third gear uh, when you're when you have to disassemble the rear wheel. It, this is see that's too much tension. You want to back it off just a little bit more, just give a little bit of play, and then tighten the jam nut down, and that's it. It's all set. Release the clamp. Like that. Now the tensioner. The tensioner is one of them cheap Chinese type. <laughs> I had modified it and used the internal spring to uh, do reversal, but it's still not strong enough spring. So I put a separate spring on it, but the, the spring stretched out, stretched out a lot. So what I did was a uh, little trick, I guess I learned, to use a wire tie. And it works. It works flawlessly. The chain tensioner guides the chain. You know, that's the benefit of the chain tensioner. It definitely guides the chain. You put your wire tie through, through the chain tensioner, and then you go here. And just snug it up. Not too tight. You don't want to loose either. And then just cut the excess off. Simple as that. Now, is that enough? Is that the right way to do it? I don't know. But it works. As you can see, chain is true as if, as if it was a one speed. Uh, but it's actually a three speed because it's Sturmy Archer. You see my tires? Perfect. But I still can't figure out what's up with those brakes. I don't understand that. Let's see if it'll uh, see if the now I'll put it back up. Just lift it up. I think there's air in the lines. I think that's why it's making that noise. That's got to be air in the lines. I don't know. The brakes work perfectly fine. I just never heard hydraulic brakes do that before. Okay, now. No, see, it's not going into first gear. So. Put it back to third. You have to snug this up a little bit more. That's how you know if you got uh, got that correct. Second. Nope, won't go in. That's third gear. No, nope, won't go in the second. Huh. <coughs> Not pulling it enough. Uh oh. I think I messed up again. I think I messed up. That nut looks crooked. Uh oh. I think I messed up. I think so. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. 
Uh, I think that axle is about to break. I think I torqued it too much. I think I torqued it too much. Uh oh. We have to order a new. Okay. Well, anyhow, uh, I think I torqued it a little bit too much. Oh boy. Just talking about that broken axle too. And I think I just did it again. I did. Oh, that's right. This was a used axle. That's right. So it probably weakened it. It was probably already weak from before. Oh. Yeah, that nut's leaning to one side. I'm going to have to get new axles. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that helps somebody to not torque the Sturmy Archer too much. Because you'll snap an axle like I did here. And I think that one is also snapped because the nut is kind of crooked. So I think that is ready to break. So I'm going to have to order two, two new axles just to have a spare. Thanks for watching.